We're looking here at the painters from the generation after the Hague School. Uh, Breitner was part of this group of painters who were not landscape painters, but who wanted to paint the city and who actually lived the city life to the full. These cities were at that time, Amsterdam and Rotterdam, growing very rapidly because of industrialization finally coming into the Netherlands. So there were new uh, city neighborhoods where they lived. Uh, they didn't live in the old city, they lived in the new city. And also, of course, there was a vibrant city life. So uh, Breitner and Israels and all the others, they also visited the cafes, they visited the brothels, the Varieté Theatre. So they lived like through Bohemians at the time. Breitner actually was from Rotterdam. He was born there from a higher middle class family and his parents didn't want to, him to become a painter because of course that was you know, not a good uh, income and maybe a little bit not bourgeois enough. So they wanted him to become a drawing master, which he did and he gave drawing lessons to uh, young adolescents which he hated because he wanted to be an artist. In the end he became an artist also through financial support of the boss of his father. But it left him with many loans for the rest of his life, which really were a heavy burden for him. And then at a certain moment he had a breakthrough because he was able to sell painting to the new Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. Uh, and then he decided to go to Amsterdam, enroll once more in the academy because he wanted to be a good figure painter and took part of that new Amsterdam city life, which he in the end started to paint. Well, there are several new aspects which he brought into painting and one of those is he chose to be, like he said, I want to be le peintre du peuple, so the painter of the people, meaning not the higher classes but the, the, the proletarian who now inhabited the cities because there was this new people coming to the cities. So the, the girls who worked in factories, the girls in servants, especially women he liked to paint, but also men building the new city. That, so his subject matter was new, but also his style. And that is because it looks like he painted it in a very quick style. Actually, he didn't. He pondered and he worked very hard to achieve that effect. And it's with loose, uh, loose brush strokes and it's, it's the style of suggestion. So you could say it's never really detailed, but it's, it suggests movement and, and people going about in streets. And very importantly too, he used photography as a way to study his subject. And uh, he hided that fact for the public and for his critics because photography was a new invention and people thought it was a mere tool and not an artistic. Uh, thing. So he didn't want to become known that he used photographs. They, only in the 1960s this was revealed. Of course, Brighton already being long dead. But when you look at paintings, for instance, Singelbrug at the Paleistraat, uh, then you see that the whole framing of the painting, so to speak, is very much adapted to photography. Because when you make a photograph, you very often have somebody just walking towards you and in front of the picture frame. And that is the result of his fascination with photography. Breitner was very much a Dutch artist. Uh, I always say he is world famous in the Netherlands, though there are foreign collectors of his work. But he is not that known in, for instance, France. And his relationship with French painting uh, is there, obviously, but it's not so much impressionist. Uh, he was fascinated by Edouard Manet and Edgar Dugas. He was, in fact, in, in Paris in 1883 for a longer period. and. Uh, there he studied the work by Manet, who by then already had died, but there was this famous painting, L'Olympia, from Manet and Le Déjeuner sur l'Herbe, and he was very enthusiastic about that. And it was also the time when Degas, for the first time since long, started exhibiting again with the Dutch dealers in the city. So he knew that work as well. And that is the connection 
between Breitner and French painting is not necessarily the impressionism of Monet, of uh, Sisley, what you're looking at, even though the brush stroke is loose, but his color is of course totally different. His color is of the dark winters and autumns of the Netherlands. You never see a sunny painting by Breitner. I think he didn't like the summer for painting. He wanted to show the city a little bit grim. That's actually what he did. The reception of Breitner's work was actually twofold. The older generation and critics didn't like what they see, didn't understand what they saw and said, why do I have to look at ugly people painted in an ugly way? They wanted a beautiful painting. And there was one critic who, referring to Breitner's interest in Edouard Manet, even said Manet comes from Manic and Breitner is the same way, so making out a crazy painter. But the younger generation loved this because they saw in these paintings the vibe of the modern city. And they saw the life painted there, which they lived, and understood what he was about, painting the modern city. Mm -hmm.